Alright guys, now in this video I'm going to talk about a couple helpful things to know about your files um, as you are preparing them for export and then I'm also going to talk about how to one more time how to find the walls um, so that you know the um, widths that you can create for your piece. Um, so let's start off by first talking about like um, how you might want to deal with outlines when you are exporting your form. So you'll notice that I work with, if you look at this, I work with empty fills and black outlines. Frankly, the color of the outlines will not matter. The only information that the file is going to take is it's going to take the just relationships between the anchor points nothing to do with the strokes you can make the strokes as thick or as thin as you want i like to set them at one point so that that, that kind of mimics the thickness of the laser um, but no matter how thickly you set it or if you give this a fill um, it won't change it so if your fill looks like this that's fine it's not going to change anything if it looks like this it's not going to change anything either the way that I see it in Lightburn. Um, sometimes it actually can be helpful for you to kind of toggle and see it solid. Uh, first, um, might help you to identify if you have made a cutout that is linked to the piece or if like I believe in this one, if I was to select that, um, make those both. Boom. Yeah, then you would see that this is not a linked cutout. If I wanted that to be a linked cutout, I could go to Pathfinder and I could have it cut that out there so that they're linked. But maybe I want the shapes to be separate because I'm manipulating them separately. So I leave them um, individual. doesn't really matter. Um, and another thing that might help is that sometimes when people are designing this to be layered, then they might design this and give the different layers um, different colors associated with them. So probably if I anticipated this, I would have done this a little bit differently, but I'm going to use my lasso selection tool. This can be very helpful. My lasso tool, I'm just going to pull these out from the rest of the um, file. I'm just going to pull these to a separate page for a moment. There we go. Use that to select that. Of these. Oh, that was already that was a radial repeat, so I can just pull that radial repeat out to the side for a second. So if I wanted to take this and I wanted to make let's make these two one file, let's see. Yes, very good. And then take all of those and make those holes cut out. Let's see. That's a radial repeat. So what I need to do, I need to go to expand real quickly. So I need to expand that. Hit OK. And group it. There we go. Now, so sometimes that can get in your way. Now I'm going to select that. <laughs> All right, let's see why that's not happening. There we go. Let's try again. Oh, they're probably behind that shape. Let's try. There we go. That's the one. Sometimes it depends on whether the object is in the front or the back. Um, so I've got that right there. So maybe I wanted to, to treat this, you know, like a separate layer and I wanted to see how it would look on my design. Um, then I might, you know, take this. I believe it was over on top of this one no ha! maybe it was this one right here this one as a layer yes it was so that by having this be um let's say black and then seeing that on top i can kind of see how different layers would operate and it might help me to keep my layers straight as well i probably have to center that by going to right here and right there so that can also help you with your designs and again if you choose to export it that way with the colors and no stroke or with different strokes. Um, it doesn't really matter. The only thing that is being exported, you know, in a design is the outline itself. Um, if it helps you to, um, do it exactly like this so that you can really see clearly the individual lines, then absolutely do that. Sometimes I will toggle between them just to double check. So that's one thing is like the outlines, the strokes and the colors ordering of layering. Um, and then the other thing is, and actually I am, I'm going to go back and 
not totally undo all that file work I did because I actually will need that later. Um, so let's go back to here. So the other thing that we want to do is like if we were to um, reverse thought. There we go. Reverse that. Um, the other thing I would do is I would want to talk about walls. So I'm doing walls. I always do it on a duplicate. Um, so since I already have a version of that, I will, can work on this one. Um, so I'm going to show you how to get this, um, information right here. First thing I want to do is I want to open up my document info window. So I'm going to go to win window and I'm going to go to document info. At this point, um, I'm going to select objects right here under the three bars. I'm going to select objects. And at this point, if you have not already changed your document to inches, I want you to go to file and I'm sorry, illustrator and then preferences and then units. Um, it is in a different place. If you're using windows, just type it into Google, how to adjust illustrator preferences in windows for units. And I want you to make sure that in general, you are set to inches. Um, you may need to change stroke as well to inches um, for this. Um, you'll find out um, pretty soon. And so what that's going to do is every time you select an object, it's going to tell you the circumference, the outline of it in inches. Um, so of course for this, it's not really helpful because it's telling you the whole entire, you know, 78 inches is the entire way around. So what we need to do is we need to limit our selection to only one segment at a time. Again, I'm going to go to the lasso tool. Um, you could go to direct selection and that might work as well, but I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm only going to select parts of this at a time. So if it's dark blue, it's selected. If it's white, then it's not selected. And I'm just going to hit here. I'm going to drag right here. I'm going to hold that or I'm going to drag around that. So I've only got those two selected. And then I'm just going to hit my command or control C and my command or control V. It's a lot harder to right click and do copy and paste. So I'm going to do command or control, depending on if you have a Mac or Windows C. And then I'm going to hit V and it will paste right here. So that's giving me part of it. Now I don't actually want this whole thing. That's still too much for me. So I need to go into my direct selection tool, which is also your A key. I'm going to select only this one right here and only this one right here. And now I know the length of this 0.88 inches. Um, so I know that I need however many teeth worth of 0.88 inches. So for me, that's 21 teeth. So I need 21 rectangles that have widths of 0.8806 inches and the height for all my rectangles is going to be four by default because the height of your tubes will be four. So all I have to do is click on the rectangle tool, just click one time. I then type in for the width 0.8806 and for the height four inches. Okay. Hit okay. I need 21 of those. Then the same thing now for the middle, let's say. So I'm going to go to lasso tool again. I know that you don't have to work from a copy to do this, but it just always makes me feel better in case I do need to modify something. I'm going to hit command C, command V again, hold down my V key. I'm going to go back to my A direct selection tool. I'm going to select that, delete that, select and delete right there. I now have that one. 1.4081. Going to go back to my rectangle tool. 1.4081. Four inches in height. Hit OK. And I need again because this is 20 gaps. 21 of these right there. So I'll put that to the side. Oops. 21 of those. And then of course the last part is this segment. So I'm going to go right here. Find that, oops, my goodness, lasso tool, select this right there, command C, B, right there, and again, use that A key to delete those two points, and then I have 0.604. And so that's 0 0.604 and by four inches. And then this one, because there are two sides for every tooth, I will actually not need 21 of these since I have 21 teeth, I will need 42. So double the number for the side ones. And this does work for curves as well. 
So if I had a, um, let's say my pen tool right here. If I had a gear whose teeth were shaped like this for some reason, right here, um, I could divide it into each section of the curve if I wanted to. I could try and do this whole thing in one long curve. Um, it's up to you where you want to break it up. I try and break it off at like strong extreme points. So since this is the most extreme points right here and these are all pretty soft curves, I would probably do this all in one go. If let's say I had um, right here decided to make this a sharp point right here, then that might be the place where I split my tooth right here. So I might go in with my A key and delete those two, get that length and then go back and delete that one and get that length right there. But that length again will work. So I would make for this section right here, a rectangle that is 5.1669 with a height of four inches. So it's going to be a longer rectangle for me. And then I would, of course, do some scoring on that to allow it to go around the curve. So that is how you do utilize colors, the outlines, the strokes, and as well as how you get the walls for your pieces. Of course, I would then take those and arrange them on their own artboard, as you can see right here that I've done using my distributed and my align values so that it's easy to just pop, pop, pop them out. Um, and you can arrange them how you want to, the maximum board size being um as far as cuts go 15.75 by 29.5 is the largest cuts it can make i would make my cardboard a little bit larger than that and my artboard a little bit larger as well just to give yourself some wiggle room all right um that is it for this lesson